Hey, everyone. The other day, while watching Nick's video, I got a craving for Wagyu Katsu Sando, so I'm going to make them today. Let's start with making the sauce first. First, finely chop the onions and garlic. In the description of Nick's video, it was mentioned that the sauce is based on soy sauce and rice vinegar, incorporating a total of 15 different ingredients. I've never tasted the katsu sando featured in the video, but I'm going to try making a sauce based on soy sauce and rice vinegar, with a total of 13 different ingredients, just by my own imagination. If you can get shallots, you can replace those two with shallots, I think. By the way, shallots are vegetables similar to onions commonly used in French cuisine to make sauces. Finely chopped onions and garlic are simmered over low heat with rice vinegar, red wine, and mirin. Cheap red wine is fine to use. A keen observer might have noticed by now, but this sauce is crafted using French culinary techniques. Be careful as it becomes easier to burn when the moisture is reduced. By reaching this state, you can eliminate the alcohol from the wine and the acidity from the vinegar, leaving only the richness of flavor behind. Turn off the heat and add Worcestershire sauce, tomato ketchup, soy sauce, nutmeg, honey, and butter. Let's not add too much nutmeg. Simmer lightly over medium heat. Once the sauce has thickened slightly, it's good to go. Since I want to preserve the crunchy texture of the onion, I'll use it as is without straining. Now that the sauce is ready, let's prepare the Wagyu beef katsu. Beat the eggs well. Place the meat in a large bowl for easy soaking. Cook the bread until both sides are golden brown. I'm cooking it in a frying pan, but feel free to bake it in a toaster, oven, or whichever method you prefer. Standing the cooked bread like this can prevent it from getting steamed and soggy due to the steam. Trim the fat around the meat. In the video, I'm using Wagyu ribeye, but feel free to use your preferred cut, whether it's sirloin or filet. A thickness of about 2 cm is ideal for the meat. The fat from Wagyu beef is flavorful. Let's freeze the removed fat for future use in another dish. Cutting the sinew of the meat results in a flat finish after frying. The sinew of the meat lies between the meat and fat, so make several incisions like this. This technique is also featured in the tonkatsu video, so if you haven't checked it out yet, be sure to do so. Lightly season both sides with salt and pepper. Coat it with flour, then egg, and finally podco, in that order. If you found the video entertaining, or if you try making it and find it delicious, I'd be thrilled if you could leave a comment in the video's comment section. Feel free to write any questions or requests about cooking, and I'll consider them for future reference. Your input is greatly appreciated. Fry in oil at 180 degrees Celsius for two and a half minutes. After one and a half minutes, flip it over. It's turned into a beautiful golden brown. While the Wagyu beef katsu is resting, spread the sauce on the bread. Sandwich the Wagyu beef katsu between the bread slices and trim the edges of the bread. Wiping the knife clean with each cut ensures a clean finish. Both the bread and the Wagyu beef katsu have turned out crispy. Can't wait to dig in.
It looks deliciously done. Take a look. It's a perfect finish. Itana Kimasu. The Wagyu Katsu is incredibly juicy. The combination of the katsu and the sauce is a perfect match. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel.